channel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos or uh, just want to check out others, uh, there are many others on the channel. Don't forget to click like if you like this video and also to subscribe. Uh, massive more than 95% of uh, you that watch don't actually subscribe. So can't be having that now. Anywho, welcome back. So we are here on a, another video and doing more electrical work, obviously. That is the content mainly of this channel. A few little tool reviews and things uh, uh, as well uh, within the library, as it were. But mainly it's uh, actual electrical work. So here we are today at a job and we're doing an EICR. There is the fuse board behind, as you can see. Not too bad. Uh, by the looks of it, if I remember correctly, this place was rewired about 10 years ago. The uh, label up there says roughly about 10 years ago, uh, July 2010, something like that, I think. So, yes, we're talking just over 10 years ago. And the smoke alarm up there uh, has a replace date of it on it of uh, January 2021. So... Yeah, that's, uh, that seems about right, so uh, 10 years. So it's uh, having an inspection and test. So I'm just going around doing a visual inspection currently of everything, taking off some light switches, some sockets, having a look behind. As I say, though, with it only being rewired 10 years ago, things are actually looking okay. And thankfully, the people that have been living here are not uh, DIY types. There's not been a lot of faffing and fiddling around with things. So uh, it's looking good so far from what I've been able to check. Obviously, when we get up into the fuse board and we look in there and get some test results, then obviously that may reveal some different things entirely. But I've had a look at the spotlights and they have fire hoods on them. So that's good. That's, uh, that's all right. Uh, the only thing I've noticed so far is a slight crack on one of the dimmer switches. In fact, I shall show you that now. Just there. Obviously not a huge issue or problem, but it will get noted down on the certificate. So, uh, as I say, I have uh, taken off some fittings, light switches, and had a look. And uh, we're just going through the process now of uh, doing the visual inspection. So that, that does take quite a while to actually do if you're going to do this thing properly. So we'll crack on with that. And if I come across anything else before we do the actual testing. Oh, there is one other thing. Let me show you. Ignore the very slow filling toilet. But you're in the bathroom. Pull cord. Pull cord goes. How on earth do you change that? I don't know. And also, uh, currently, I'm unsure as to whether these are IP rated. I need to get up there, take, pop them off, and have a look. And there is no markings whatsoever on them, other than a sticker here that says 12 slash 06. So, December 2006, or June 2012. Oops, sorry, there you go. Uh, yeah, don't know. Uh, the protective case has fallen off of the top. In fact, there's sort of a bit that snapped there. And then you wind your way up, and yay! So, uh, I think, personally, I'm going to be inclined to mark this down as a C2, plus the fact that mm, they're not IP rated and that so they get marked down as a C2 put down in the comments what you'd mark them as um, you know I'm always uh, willing to learn from you guys as to uh, what you think but yeah so for me that's what it's going to be the other one is over there over the, the bath and above the shower so that's one definite thing if this was the only one in here, well, potentially it's, you could argue maybe, I mean, I haven't done the calculation with the uh, height, but you maybe could argue that it's outside of the zone height-wise, uh, but the fact that, as I say, there's one over there above the shower, 
I'm going to recommend to replace these ones for IP rated. So, um, yes, there we go. All good fun. I've finished doing my visual checks now. I've also checked the uh, continuity of the bonding for the gas and the water. Got a nice low reading for them too. So that's all good. Nice and thumbs up. So just about to, well, I have already turned off the board, taken the board cover off. There we go, a weird angle. Taken the board cover off and uh, switched off all the circuits and we're gonna do our tests on each of the individual circuits. Gonna do a ZE test first and then a PFC to check that we have good earthing before we actually plow ahead. But of course the primary thing to do once you've turned off the fuse board is not to just rely on the fact that the circuit breakers, the RCD and the main switch say off. We also need to check. So for that, we need to do our safe isolation procedure. Let's show you that now. In order to carry out safe isolation, we need to have our two pole tester. There's my one and also a proving unit. So what we do first is we prove that this actually works. Because no good putting this on there and going, yep, everything's dead, because my meter says that it's not working. But then of course, if your meter's not working, you're proving it on yourself that it's dead. And then of course, that's dangerous. So we always want to be working to the best of our ability and to the best standards of health and safety. So, proving unit, two pole tester. We separate out our proving, our two pole tester. Set our proving unit up, just there. Get two probes of our two pole tester. Place in. You can see that it's lighting up there. And that's it. We have now proved that our two pole continuity tester works. So we go between earth and neutral, nothing, nothing coming up on here, no indication on the LCD display. Between live and earth, Stick the probe into earth. Go across on the buzz bar down here. No, nothing across the top of these either. No, nothing across there, nothing across there, nothing across to that one, or that one, or that one, or that one. And then between neutral and live, neutral, live, nothing, live, nothing, nothing. You get the idea. Okay, so nothing there. Now, what if our meter has broken during the time that we've done that? So we need to check again with our proving unit. So. Two pole tester into our proving unit. And it counts down, you can see, and there we go. We have carried out our safe isolation procedure. We know our tester works, we've tested it twice, it's fine. We know that the board is now safely isolated. The on off switch, the main switch works. The RCD works when it's in the off position. The circuit breakers work in the off position. And I feel happy to continue and to disconnect some of these circuits to carry out tests on them. We've carried out our ZE and got a reading for that. Now we're going to do our PFC, which the PFC is the highest of the two readings between the PSCC, so the prospective short circuit current, he says with a rabbit face, and the PEFC, the Prospective Earth Fault Current. So let's do PEFC first. So my test leads are configured and set up for the PEFC. So 
We're just waiting for our reading to come through from our test meter. And we have a reading of 554 amps. So let's configure our test leads around to now do the P S C C. So that's between neutral and live. And once again, we wait while our test tester uh, conducts the test and we wait for the reading. And that reading we get is 618, 618 amps. So that is the reading that I will be putting down on my test certificate, 0 0.618 killer amps. Now I'm going to test the kitchen sockets. So we need to, first of all, because the kitchen is on a ring, as the rest of the sockets are within this property, two separate rings, uh, one on each side of the RCDs, we're going to do an end-to-end -end test to make sure that we've actually got continuity. So what we do, we take the individual cables out of their respective uh, conductors, um, sorry, not conductors, uh, terminations rather. So of course the lives, the two of those have come out the 32 amp circuit breaker, the neutrals have come out neutral terminal, and the CPCs have come out of the main earth terminal, or not main earth terminal, but the main earth terminal that's within the fuse board. So what we do is we then get our test leads with the crocodile clips on. And we see what we have. So, yes, that peeping noise indicates that we have continuity on our lives. 0 0.41 for our live or line. To 0 0.42 on our neutral and our CPC. We can actually make a calculation on that before we uh, see what our reading is. So if you do one, uh, so 0 0.42 or 0 0.41 uh, times 1.67. And we get the 1.67 figure because the neutral and the live are a 2.5 mil cable, whereas the CPCs are only a 1.5 mil cable. If you do 2.5 divided by 1.5, you get 1.6666667, depending on the length of your calculator screen. And so that means that the resistance of the CPC will be 1.67 times greater than the resistance of the CPC, sorry, than the neutral and the live. So multiply 0.42 by 1.67 to get this. The reading I'm getting is 0 0.66 on my meter. So that seems about fair. It's not too bad at all. So 0 0.41, 0 0.42 and 0.66. And we're on to our figure of eight test now. So what it involves, we get some adapters, clips, crop clip, things like this, or you can use Wagos or uh, terminal strips, that sort of thing. Basically what you need to do is connect one of the lives to one of the CPCs. Now you want to be connecting the live that goes out and basically the CPC that comes back. So not the same CPC. Now, it can be quite difficult to find which is the ends correctly before we do this. 
So, it involves pulling out to some extent the cable and trying to track which one it possibly could be. I have a thinking that it's uh, that live there is going to be that so that live there is probably that CPC so we will go between that live there and that CPC and this live here and that CPC and then what we do, oh hello, then what we do is go around all of the sockets uh, with our socket tester and we take the highest reading and then that figure is our R1, R2 test result. So that's it, we're practically done here. Uh, we've carried out all the other tests. I'm not really bothered to film it much because you can see it, uh, uh, some of it, the same similar sort of tests uh, on one of my other videos that I've done. And also there's many videos uh, where they do proper walkthroughs of EICRs on other channels. So um, what I have found here though, for one thing, is uh, this circuit here that I've um, put a uh, safety connection end on the end of uh, was connected into this breaker here, which is actually a 32 amp breaker. Having two two fives in there is fine, but uh, as I say, there was just the three, actually, sorry, there wasn't just, there were three cables in there. So uh, my concern was the fact that you have a 32 amp breaker potentially just uh, protecting uh, one 2.5 mil cable. I don't know how everybody else's opinion on that is, but for me, that's a bit of a no-no. So I will be recommending to the customer that uh, I just come back for a 10 or a 16, maybe even just a six amp um, breaker there to look after the underfloor heating. It is on a fuse spur that's uh, spurred down anyway, or fused down rather, not spurred down, fused down anyway. So that should be fine. And it's only electric underfloor heating that it does, nothing else. I've checked around all the other circuits and it is just that that it does. So uh, that's it. Just uh, pull the cover back on and pack up and head out to the van. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you, as I said at the beginning of this video, if you've enjoyed this video and wish to see more content on this channel, uh, please subscribe and like. Also, you can follow us on Instagram at Acer DC Electrics, and it's the same handle for Twitter as well. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Stay safe and stay well.